very warm welcome to the final episode of the Kitchen Room Box series. Now I'm really excited about today's episode as I'm going to be dressing the kitchen and applying the finishing touches to the room box. So let's get started. So the first thing to do when you dress a scene is to bring out all of your miniatures and decide what you're going to use. Now my colour scheme is going to be blue and yellow. So I've taken out all of the pieces that I've got in that colour range and sort of very roughly displayed them there just to see how much I'm going to need and what looks good where. So before I dismantled my display I took a couple of photos using my phone camera just so I can remember where I had things and what looked good where. And to attach my pieces, I'm going to be using a mixture of tacky wax and glue. And this is just my Gorilla wood glue, which will work on some of the pieces, but not the china pieces or the metal pieces. But it does work quite well with things like light plastic. So I'll use it where I can, but otherwise I'll use the tacky wax. And I'm going to start over on the sink unit and then work my way along. And I'm starting with a little fairy liquid bottle. Now these little bottle blanks I actually sell in my Etsy shop. They're really nice, true to scale and a really lovely shape. And then I've just printed that label off so I found the image on Google Images and then just reduced it down to six millimetres square or a quarter of an inch square and I've just glued that on there. So I'm going to glue that on the side of the sink. Have that just there. And I've got my tweezers here as well, just for the more sort of fiddly pieces. Let's give that a press into place. I just looked out in the garden and the little muntjac deer is there. So let me just show you. She's been back now um, for about a week and they actually live in that hedge. She might be heading back in there now. <laughs> and there's her and a male. There she goes. <laughs> little leg hanging out at the back there. But they're such lovely little things and they come and eat the um, bird seed that we put down. Just really lovely to watch. Okay, so back to the kitchen and I've also cut a little tiny bit of washing up sponge. Now you really do just want to take a tiny little corner and then pull off as much of the sort of green scouring pad part as you can just to leave a little trace of it otherwise you'll find that it looks a little bit too bulky and you only want that to be really tiny. So let's pop that next to the washing up liquid there. Oops. Stick into the tweezers and not the draining board. Did I just knock that? Yeah, that hasn't fully glued into place yet. Let me give that another press. So standing right in the corner there, I'm going to have my blue and white plate. I want it across that corner just so that everything on the draining board isn't just facing forward. So I want to create some sort of different angles and things. Now this I'm going to have to use tacky wax for, and it's in a bit of an odd position. So I'm sort of going to put a bit of tacky wax on the bottom and then a little bit on each of those edges. And I'm going to use a cocktail stick to do that because I find if you sort of dig in your thumbnail, you can actually split the back of your nail. <laughs> does make it quite sore. <laughs> okay so I don't think this plate has sort of got a right way up so I'm just going to stick that at the bottom down there and make that the bottom. Now I know this will be showing but I am going to have something in front of it so I don't mind but if you're sort of just using the tacky wax you want to use as little as, little as possible and if it's underneath have it hidden as much as you can I think it always ruins a display if you can actually see the tacky wax, or little bits of tacky wax showing. I'm going to put 
quite a sort of big wadge there on each edge of the plate, which I hope will make contact with the wall. Like that, so let's give that a go. Push that right in. That actually feels, oh sorry, I'm in the way there. That actually feels nice and firm in there. Give that a really good press against the wall. I might even be able to remove a little bit of that because it is sticking quite nicely at the sides. I'm going to get that bit from the side as well. Anything you take off, just pop back in your little pot. Take a bit off there. Like that. And then I've got this lovely copper pot here. And I'm going to use a little bit of tacky wax to secure the lid first. I'm going to have that stand in there. I'm just getting underneath the draining board as well to press that into place. Give that a good firm press. And then I can see it coming out underneath there so I'm just going to get rid of that. Couple of little drinking glasses there as well which I've secured with tacky wax. So I'm then going to have a little bowl of eggs there and I've actually taken these eggs out of a little um, dish that I do sell in my Etsy shop so they've all got the glue on them still so I'm going to clean them off and then glue them into this new bowl and they're only ever done sort of with a, a very tacky glue so it's always easy to dismantle things that come sort of pre-displayed. So that's the eggs, all um, tacky waxed into the bowl and then that's tacky waxed onto the draining board. And then I've got here this little sort of muslin cloth and this came in a pot of cleansing cream and it's a really nice sort of fine fabric. So I've cut a square, 25 millimetres or one inch square, and when you cut it, it actually comes apart. So it's like a two ply thing. So I'm just using the front piece, which has got a little bit of a, a pattern to it. And I'm just going to glue this over the front of the sink, a little sort of dishcloth. Just take those frayed edges off. So I'm going to sort of glue it inwards like that and then have it hanging over the edge of the sink. Like that. And I know it's sort of white against white, but you can see it. And I've put that at that edge of the sink on purpose, just because we've got a lot going on at this corner. So then you want to sort of bring the eye over a bit. So I want to hang my egg poacher above the sink like that in that part of the wall. Now it's not completely flat from base to handle. So I'm just going to sort of find out where the tacky wax needs to go. So I'm pressing it against the wall. So I'm going to want a little bit on the inside of the actual pan part and then some on the flat part of the handle. So let's give that a go. It's quite heavy. These are really nice sort of proper copper pots. And again, I sell these in the Etsy shop. <laughs> so I'm spreading that out as thinly as I can on that flat part of the handle. Obviously, I don't want that sort of splaying out each side. And then let's just put a little bit on that sort of inside edge of the base there. Give that a good press. I think the actual handle is going to be taking the weight of that. I just don't want it sort of sticking forwards because that wouldn't look natural. I want to make sure that's holding before I sort of let go of it. The bit at the bottom of the pan isn't working, but the bit where the handle is is sticking quite nicely. Oops. And that just adds a nice bit of colour into that corner. And I've put the little strainer on that wall. And I'll have a look through my little storage unit in a moment, see if I've got some tiny little nails that I can just push into the wall there and there to make it look as though they're hanging. So now I want to move on to the wall shelf. So you might remember when I made the little shelf unit that I wanted the four hooks because I had this lovely set of four little cups. So I've actually put the tacky wax onto the side of the cup, sl slid them over the hook, but then pressed them against the wall just to make them look as though they're hanging there. 
So onto the top shelf there, and I've started off with my little jug. And now I want this plate in the center. And this is a little plate that I bought from Minatura the last time I was there. And I actually bought a nice set. I thought this little cottage one really went well in here. Again, attaching that to the wall there. And I've got this little sort of fixed, um, I think it's meant to be a sugar bowl, but it's quite large. I'm having that up on the top shelf there. Is that in as well? Always put your finger underneath the shelf when you're sort of pressing things into place. Like that. And then to sit in that corner, this is actually a 124th scale little plant but 24th scale items can work well in 12 12th scale displays so I'm going to have that at the end there I'm going to use my tweezers to get that in there Oops, that's because I want it facing a particular way so that those um, leaves are sort of at that angle I'm going to have to press it down with my finger though some tacky wax on one of the leaves there, not quite sure how it got up there. So that's my top shelf done and I'm starting off on the second shelf with a little sort of cookery book that I'd made quite a while ago but I haven't got anywhere else for it so I'm just going to have that stand in at that end. So I'm going to glue that into place using the old Gorilla Wood glue. So for the final piece on my lower shelf there, I've made up a little jar of orange, lemon and lime slices. And this is a little pack of cane slices that I've had in my collection for a long time. And I thought the yellow would bring out the yellow in the rest of the scene. So I'm just going to pop that in that space there. I've also used a little bit of tacky wax just to attach the lid. really good. Now let's move on to the base unit. So I've actually started off by gluing the base unit into place so I just put a bit of glue on each of the legs, or bottom of the legs, and then press that into place. So that's now nice and secure in there as well. So I'm going to start off on my base unit with a nice yellow potted rose. And these were originally little pots, if I show you, with just three stems in each. But what you can do is just really carefully pull them out of the earth there and then re-display them if you need to. And I just thought it looked better as a sort of larger bunch and in this lovely little pot as well. So I'm going to start off with those over there at the edge of the unit. And I've already sort of had a practice display with this so I know exactly where I want to place everything. And I'm having that at that side because on the chair over here I'm going to have a little shopping basket with some yellow roses in it. So again I want to sort of break up those colour areas. So have a think about that as well because if you were to then have those there then you've got the yellow there. You've got too much in one area. So I'll have yellow and then that splash of yellow there. Another splash of yellow there. And then we've got the yellow fabric. So I'm sort of not purposely placing it into a triangle, but that's sort of how it's come out. But that's how you want to try to draw the eye in, rather than having all of your colour all in the one area. And then what I've got here is one of these milk jugs. And they're, it's quite a sort of oversized jug, but I still like them anyway. This is about 25 millimetres high, so in real life that would be a foot high. But I have actually got a large blue and white jug. It doesn't say milk on it, it's patterned, but it is about a foot tall. So these do still work in a 12th scale setting. And if you work in one si sixth scale, the um, fashion doll size then these would be perfect for that as well and what I've put inside is just three rolling pins I've stuck those two in using a bit of tacky wax but I just wanted to show you how easy rolling pins are to make so I've just got a piece of five millimeter dowel there 
rounded over each end just very very slightly just so you haven't got the sharp cuts and then put a little draw knob on each end and you can paint them and do different things with them and I really like making those so I'm going to stick that third one in there and I like using jugs for other things you know um, you can put wooden spoons and things like that in them or your flowers they would have looked nice with the flowers as well but I'm going to have this at this other end and again that's um, purposeful just so that I don't have two bulky items next to each other okay so let me get a bit of tacky wax on the bottom of this one as well so I'm now going to add a little bowl of apples and I really love using fruit bowls in displays because you can add in lots of colour with them now this little bowl has actually got a chip out of it and the pattern is on that side so we won't be able to see the pattern but the other side is still a really nice sort of glazed blue and white bowl so that still looks really nice and knowing that I was placing it that way I've displayed to the front as well so I've got my sort of nicer apples showing at the front there and you, you can find a tutorial for making polymer clay apples here on my channel and I've done a, a very small playlist with all my polymer clay makes but I will be adding to that eventually I'm going to have that there and I fixed all of the apples in there again using the tacky wax. I think I might have a little bit too much tacky wax on the bottom there. Let's see if I can squish it down a bit. And that's actually the beauty of using tacky wax because obviously you can just remove it and replace it if you need to. Let's just get a little bit of that off from around the foot there. And then when I'm doing a fruit display, I always keep up pieces of fruit to one side, usually apples. And I'm just going to glue those onto directly onto the worktop next to the bowl. I've got this little fabric covered pickling journal here, again, that I made quite a while ago. And little books and things like that are really nice for little fillers. And they're really easy to make. So I'm going to glue that into place as well. There. I'm going to have my other little Cornishware canister at the back there. Again, these two I've had for many years. They were sort of some of the first miniatures that I ever bought. I'm from a company that's no longer going, um, that used to be called Hatton Woods, and they really did do some really lovely minis, or miniature items. And finally, this little jug. I just really sort of like the three pieces together, the plant pot and the canister and the little jug. They make a nice little trio there. I'll have that there like that. Of the excess tacky wax. I'm really pleased with that. So what I want to do now is come back over here to the sink unit and I've got this little crate here again that I made some years ago. Used a water slide transfer there for the lettering on the front and I've also got lots of pieces of Fimo vegetables or polymer clay vegetables. Now I didn't make all of these it's a mixture of sort of made and bought, but I'm going to use them now to make a little display in the crate. So I've just started off with a little bit of glue in the bottom of the crate and over the back two edges. And I'm going to have it stand in at a little bit of an angle, actually like that. So I'm going to start with the leaks at the back edge there. Just to add a bit of height at the back of my display. I might need to add a bit of tacky wax in here as well where it's not touching the glue. Let me just sort of get started. Yeah, so we'll have those in that back corner. And then I want to fill up the bottom of the crate with some of the vegetables that aren't as good as others. So like some of the potatoes that went a little bit too large and the colouring isn't brilliant, so I'm going to use those as a sort of base. They're quite nice ones. 
some of these red potatoes as well that didn't quite come out the right colour. And if you don't sort of have any um, vegetables that you want to hide, then you can use a little bit of um, tissue paper or a bit of brown paper crunched up just to give yourself a bit of a base. What I'm going to do is put a bit of tacky wax on the side of that one. Because that one's not touching the glue. So I'm just building up my crate, working out where the next piece will be touching and then adding a little bit of tacky wax and then pressing it into place. Let's see if I can get another carrot in there. And I'm using the um, screwdriver to get the tacky wax out of the pot now because my cocktail stick kept breaking so using something a little bit more solid. I'm just going to pop that one in there. And sort of try and do it so that things look as though they're laid naturally. It is quite difficult because with the tacky wax things are all sort of moving around because it's obviously not solidly glued. But if you can get them to look like they're actually laying on top of something rather than just sort of sticking up at an unnatural angle then that works better. I actually want to see if I can get maybe a thin parsnip in there. Oh yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> made for that little spot. So there's my little vegetable crate and I'm going to glue that straight to the floor under there. Again using my Gorilla Wood glue. Have that at a bit of an angle. Give it a good press. And you know if you didn't want to do a crate of vegetables you could Perhaps have a log basket or something underneath your sink or just some nice jugs or copperware. And there's a tutorial on the channel here for a wicker look log basket if you want to have a go at that. And I imagine there to be a lovely sort of range cooker in another part of this kitchen. <laughs> like that. And then again, I've saved a couple of potatoes here that I'm going to glue onto the floor just in front of the crate just to make it look as though they've fallen out there. Like that. Now I want to move over to the little chair, which sits in the corner there, just at a slight angle. And I want to have a little shopping basket on the chair. And I've got this lovely little wicker basket that again I've had in my collection for quite a while. Now it's lined in this sort of blue and pink fabric which has faded quite badly over the years. So I'm going to unpick that and reline it with the yellow sink fabric. I'm going to try and ease this off really carefully so I don't split the wicker. And then use it as a template for a new piece of fabric. actually use two pieces there makes it a bit easier. So I've cut two pieces of fabric there and glued over a hem on each and then I'm just going to apply glue again to the other side of the hem. This will go around the top edge of the basket like that. So glue it so it's sort of sitting in the centre of the basket there. And you just want each piece of fabric to wrap around to where the handle is. So they're like that. Don't worry if those edges are a bit frayed because we're going to be tucking those in. And like that. This just gives us a nice border around the top of the basket. that into place and then I'm going to do the other one before tucking them both in together. And if you've got quite a closed um, woven basket then you 
you don't need to line it but I think it looks nice with a little bit of a border around that outside edge but if you are using an open weave basket then do add a line in otherwise you'll be able to sort of see all of your tacky wax or glue inside the basket so it just neatens it up a bit to trim that off and then same thing Okay. Once you've let that dry off for a moment, you can just tuck it all inside the basket. No glue needed or anything. I'm just pressing it into place again as I tuck it in. Make sure you've got that nice border around that edge. The glue hasn't completely dried off yet. So do leave it sort of long enough that your glue dries. Make sure you've got a nice straight outside edge. That colour looks really nice with the colour of the wicker. Trim or tuck in any loose threads. So I've just folded another little piece of fabric in the bottom there and glued that into place just to give it a little bit more height inside the basket so that our items stand out a little bit more. And I'm going to use tacky wax to secure the items into place. I'm going to start with that French loaf over in that corner. And I had a little play around beforehand as well just to work out where I wanted everything to go. So that's a good idea to do that. And then if you're sort of working on a scene similar to mine and you're having the basket in quite a small space, just make sure that you're not sort of splaying the items out too much. If I stand that on there, I don't want their, I don't want them to be sort of sticking out too much so that they're not going to fit in there or they're going to be sort of hitting the wall and the unit. So I'm just going to stand that French loaf up a little bit. Then I'm going to put the wine in. It can just actually stand in there at the back. I've got a couple of little Dolls House magazines here. So I'm going to pop those in next. I can actually use my glue for those. I'm just going to ease those behind that bottle there and sort of standing up quite high as well. And then what I want to sort of do over here is use my little paper roses. Uh, I'm going to trim the stems down as I just sort of want them coming out at this side of the basket in a little bunch. So I'll trim them down and then I can just use another stem to wrap around the base. do quite a few so that we've got a nice bunch. The lady of the kitchen is obviously a fan of yellow roses. So I've got a bunch of 12 roses there and then I took one of the stems and just wrapped it around the others just to secure those together and now I'm going to attach these into the basket so I've bent the stems over like that so they can sit right in that corner. I think that will look really nice. I am actually going to use a bit of tacky wax on the base of the stems there. I'll just sort of put a big chunk on and then press them into place inside the basket. Just want them sort of hanging over that corner. I'll go down like that. And these sort of little paper ones with the wire stems are really good for miniature work because you can sort of display them and move them around like that where you want them to go. Whereas the sort of polymer clay ones are, are sort of set really in that position. That looks really nice. Just have those hanging over a little bit more. I'm just going to try it on the chair again. Just make sure I'm not sort of displaying out too far. No, that's perfect. And then I've just sort of got some little bits and pieces here, um, some little food packets and things that I want to put 
in this little area here. Toblerone there, Matt's favourite chocolate. I'll have that come in over that side. I think it's nice to put little personal touches like that in if you're making something for yourself. Favourite cakes, favourite chocolates. Jam tarts, that's definitely one of my favourites. I'll have that sitting at the front there, I think. Maybe just sort of angle slightly backwards. Again, always make sure that it's sitting naturally. In fact, I'm going to use glue on this because this is actually just a hollow empty packet. It's not sort of wrapped around a piece of wood or anything, so I'm not going to be able to press it too hard into place. Like that. And I've got another chocolate bar there, which I've used in a shopping bag before, so when I removed it, it removed some of the paper. But I can actually hide that in the front of the basket there. So never sort of get rid of things if you slightly ruin them. Same as the little sort of chipped fruit bowl. Always keep hold of things. So I just want to pull that up a bit and then squeeze it towards the front of the basket like that. I've got a packet of granulated sugar there, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit that in. And I've also got a tin of baked beans. If I move that Toblerone forward a bit, I might be able to get that granulated sugar. Oh, I need to put my glasses back on, I can't see if that's the right way up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I must admit, I actually did that earlier and stuck the um, fairy liquid label upside down on the, on the washing up liquid bottle. I'll put a bit sort of around the front and sides as well. I'm not sure how that's going to sit in there. It's going to be holding itself up a little bit. I wanted to sort of sneak it in there if I can. I'm just trying to turn it a little bit. And then that little gap might actually be perfect for the baked beans. And again, this is a little tin that I've had for a long time. No, that's not going to go in there, so that's a bit, little bit too big. So I'll just jiggle those things around. Don't mean to push that backwards. Let's tilt that over a little bit. Pull that up. There's our little shopping basket. And I love doing these little shopping baskets and shopping bags. And if you haven't got a basket, have a look at the little shopping bag tutorial. I'm sure you've all seen it by now because I've made it lots of times in different places and for lots of my displays as well. And you can do the same in them, a nice little display. But it's so much fun sort of putting in all of your favourite things and displaying them in there as well. So I'm now going to actually glue this to the chair. So I'm having the chair in there at an angle, so I want to have the basket um, straight, straight onto the front of the room box like that. And I'm actually just going to glue that directly to the top of the chair. Not to the top, you know, but the seat. <laughs> I'm sure you knew what I meant. Giving that a good press into place. I'm just going to sort of support the bottom of the chair there as well rather than pressing down on the legs. I'm not sure if that's going to stick because it's an open weave at the bottom of the basket as well, so there might not be a lot for it to sort of grab to. I'm hoping it will. Right, it's not actually sticking, so I'm going to put some tacky wax on there as well. So that has actually worked this time, that's stuck nice and firmly on there. And now I want to actually glue the chair. To the floor of the room box. And I've just applied the glue to the three legs that are actually fully touching the floor. And then 
this front one, if you remember, just slightly overhangs. Again, press down on supported areas. So I'm sort of pressing at the top of the leg there and then at the top of that back leg as well. So I've just added the first little window pull to one side of the window and I'm using these little metal pulls and originally these were silver and I used my metallic gold paint to make those match the taps. They didn't quite look right in silver and I've just attached that to the window there using some super glue. I'm going to attach the second one now. Level with the first one there. Like that, I think they look really good. And now I actually want to add a backdrop to the window. And I've chosen this image, which is a photograph I took last year at Borton House Gardens, and it's one of our favourite gardens to visit. And I like the fact that it's got the little path running along the side there. So what I did was printed this off first in black and white in just a draft print, just so that I could hold it into place and make sure I liked it. And then I've printed it off in sort of high quality colour. And I'm going to pop it behind the window there so that I can see the little path running up that side. And I think that looks really nice. So choose something that's got a bit of scale so that it doesn't look like everything's sort of stuck to the window. So if you can find something with a path or something that actually goes off into the distance, then that will work better. So now I'm just going to glue this into place behind the window, like that. And then I've got here my torch, so I'm just gonna shine that at the back of the window there. And if you can sort of position your room box so that you can have it in the window so that the natural light is coming through, then that does look really good. So all I actually need to do now is complete the front of the room box or the door if you like and then we're just about done. So I attached a piece of acetate into the back of the frame using deluxe materials glue and glaze and I just squeeze that all around the outside edge. I'm using a piece of A4 acetate, which I cut to size. That just needed a little bit trimming off top and side. The acetate has now completely dried into place. So all I need to do now is actually put the hinges back in at the top of this frame. I don't want to do that yet because I want to get loads of lovely photos inside before I sort of close it off. But there is our completed room box and I'm really pleased with how it looks. And this is now going to take pride of place in my own kitchen. And it's something that I shall enjoy looking at every day. I really hope you've enjoyed this series. And now this is complete, I shall be returning to my doll's house. So look out for new episodes of my doll's house diary coming soon. And if you have a go at making a room box or a shadow box or a shadow frame, please do share photos to my Facebook group, Little Bits and Pieces by You. And if you're not already a member, just pop over to my Facebook page where you can request to join and I'll pop a link in the description box below. But that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching throughout the series and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.